Our world is more divided than ever, with disagreements on politics, international conflict, and bigotry tearing people apart. But there is one thing that still holds the power to unite us all, and that's the fact that nobody has the slightest idea what in the actual hell Megalopolis is supposed to be. Francis Ford Coppola admittedly deserves credit for self-financing the $120 million film and maintaining full creative control. But sometimes there is such a thing as having too much freedom, and often that can result in a self-indulgent and isolating product like Megalopolis. A visionary film with little coherence to rival other notorious cinematic oddities. The movie seems to be set in a parallel version of New York called New Rome, run by the corrupt Mayor Franklin Cicero, played by Giancarlo Esposito, who for some unexplained reason has a vendetta against Adam Driver's Caesar Catalina, an architect who can stop and start time at will, and has developed a new element called Megalon, which he aims to use in order to rebuild the city into a utopian paradise. That at first seems to be what Megalopolis is about, but then the the story spirals into chaos with multiple subplots and characters, like Cicero's daughter Julia, who's Natalie Emmanuel, spying on Caesar and eventually falling in love with him. John Voight is an elderly banker who marries Aubrey Plaza's younger reporter by the name of Wow Platinum. A bizarre scene in a Roman-style coliseum featuring acrobatics, wrestling, and a pop star's virginity being auctioned. An old Soviet satellite crashing into and nearly wiping out the city. Caesar delivering the to be or not to be soliloquy from Hamlet to old-timey reporters. Quarters, Shia LaBeouf as an eyebrowless fop who soon becomes a fascist leader, and so much more insanity. Despite these wild moments, Megalopolis is deeply confusing with too many ideas competing for attention, not to mention shockingly pretentious as the film, and by extension Coppola, is too consumed with its artistic ambition to focus on compelling characters or a cohesive plot, resulting in a film that somehow feels both self-serious and knowingly bizarre. It has all the makings of a so-bad-it's-good cult classic like The Room or Showgirls, but it lacks their charm by taking itself too seriously, while some of its themes like that auctioning of a pop star's virginity are uncomfortable, especially in light of the filmmaker's recently alleged on-set misconduct. Ultimately, Megalopolis will likely be remembered as a grand Hollywood failure, joining the ranks of infamous flops like Heaven's Gate and Battlefield Earth that are similarly too chaotic and confusing to be unintentionally enjoyable, even with moments of absurdity like Aubrey Plaza delivering lines like, you are anal as hell, but I am oral as hell. So this spectacular misfire earns just one star from me. Visit the Film Feeder website to read my more detailed review, but for now, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe for more reviews, and I'll see you next time.